autochthons, or autochthonous, of an inhabitant of a place, indigenous rather than descended from migrants or colonists. The American Nations If America has had an aboriginal population, or autochthons, men born from the soil, it is there that they should be found, driven to the south and those remote climes by the ancient colonies of other nations. And they should offer features, complexions, languages, and manners totally different from any other. I'm handsome, I'm fast, I'm pretty, and can't possibly be beat. If all the Americans derive from ancient colonies, it is still there that ought to be found the primitive tribes. driven on by the subsequent colonies and tribes. Therefore, these austral tribes are exceedingly interesting to study as the most ancient relics of American population. If the American nation sprung from ancient colonies, it is among the primitive population of the earth. Two million year old artifact, the Nampa figure in according to geological evidence, the strata at this depth is believed to be at least two million years old. 340,000 year old Y chromosome discovered in North America. The father gene or Y chromosomal Adam gene was discovered in South Carolina and dated 340,000 years old. That their parents must be sought and found since America appears to have been partly people even before the flood. The Americans had long before Columbus large cities built of stones, bricks, or wood with walls, ditches, temples, palaces, some of which were of immense size and population. One of them, Atalum near Palenque, was 28 miles long, equal to Thebes, Babylon, and Kanoj and Hindustan, in the size and monuments.
Nearly all of the ancient sciences and useful primitive arts were known in America. As well as commerce and navigation, symbolic and alphabetic writing, Nearly all of the Asiatic religions and customs The most civilized nations had even colleges and universities Canals and paved roads Splendid temples and monuments Excerpts from the American nations or outlines of the national history of the ancient and modern nations of North and South America by Professor C. S. Raffinesque in 1836. They just go into a country, plague the whole place mm -hmm. out, and then take over their buildings. New York was already there for thousands of years. San Francisco was there for thousands of years. Los Angeles was there for thousands of years. They were built by the indigenous people who were black and, Indi and, and Indians as well. Whoa. The black people, they weren't brought over by slaves. They are the original owners of America. Whoa. Black people, Af wow. African Americans. They don't come from Africa. They were already here and they plagued them out and they stole the, Smith, the Smithsonian Institute, which is Jesuit controlled, stole their knowledge, stole their history. And now we're just left wondering who we are, where we are, where we come from, where we're going. We don't know. The Spanish monarchs received Columbus, also known as Cristobal Colón in Barcelona, Spain. Illustration of Cristobal Colón by Conde Rosalie de Larges in 1878. Notice the depiction of the indigenous Americans that were brought to Spain after the first voyage in 1492. Europeans know the truth. The Americas the vast ranges of continents and land masses stretching as far north as the Cuffalcoban Islands of Greenland to the southernmost point of Cape Horn, comprising the totality of North, Central, and South America, which is the majority of the land in the Western Hemisphere. When following the course of the constellations, those immovable and perpetually fastened upon America are reached, it will appear that, while all that is sublime in the historic past centers upon Egypt, all that is sublime in the prehistoric past centers upon America. Ancient mounds older than Egyptian pyramids. Indians first built mounds in Louisiana in 4000 BC, making them among the oldest in the Western Hemisphere. Louisiana has mounds older than the pyramids in Mexico and South America, older than Stonehenge in England, and older than the earliest pyramids in Egypt. And as the curtain which has hitherto concealed the prehistoric connection between the peoples of ancient Egypt and of America is lifted, it will be seen that the people of the eagle on the Nile, being descended from the original people of the eagle of this continent, America, the twine are one, or one and the same, and that prehistoric America was the original Egypt 
or Eagle Land prior to the mighty dispersion in the days of Peleg when the earth was divided and the great globe itself was nearly rent asunder. First born among continents, says Agassiz, America has been falsely denominated the New World. Hers was the first dry land lifted out of the waters. Hers the first shore washed by the ocean that enveloped all the earth beside. And while Europe was represented only by islands rising here and there above the sea, America already stretched in an unbroken line of land from Nova Scotia to the far west. Pacificy, Quad Volgo Mar del Sur. Pictured is a map of the Pacific Ocean drawn in 1589 by the Brabantian cartographer, geographer, and cosmographer Abraham Ortelius of the Duchy of Brabant, a former state of the Holy Roman Empire established in 1183. Brabant was a province in the south of the Netherlands until it was dissolved after the Dutch Revolt in 1795. Abraham Ortelius is conventionally recognized as the creator of the first modern atlas and the one of the first to propose that the continents were joined before drifting to their present positions. The Maris Pacifici map was published in the 1592 edition of Abraham Ortelius' atlas entitled The Tremorbis Terrarum, meaning the Globe Theater or Theater of the World in Latin, and it is considered to be the first true modern atlas. The Maris Pacifici is one of the first printed maps to be devoted to the Pacific Ocean, the map reflects the first 75 years of European exploration within the world's largest body of water albeit shown to be much smaller than the true size of the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean is the largest and deepest of Earth's five oceanic divisions. It extends from the Arctic Ocean in the north to the Southern Ocean to Antarctica in the south, and it is bounded by the continents of Asia and Australia in the west and the Americas in the east. The trade winds, or the easterlies, are the prevailing winds that perpetually flow from east to west across the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. The Atlantic trade winds flow from Europe and Africa to North, Central, and South America by way of the Atlantic equatorial currents that flow from Europe and Africa and then circumventing west to east from the Americas to Europe and Africa by way of Gulf Streams and the Atlantic equatorial countercurrents or westerlies in the middle latitudes. The Atlantic trade winds have been used by sailors or seafarers for centuries, and many ancient civilizations traversing the Atlantic Ocean east to west from Europe and Africa to the Americas, and west to east from the Americas to Europe and Africa, or transatlantic crossings. The Pacific trade winds are permanent east to west prevailing winds that flow in the Earth's equatorial region. The trade winds blow mainly from the northeast and the northern hemisphere and from the southeast and the southern hemisphere, strengthening during the winter and when the Arctic oscillation is in its warm phase. Above the equator, Pacific Ocean trade winds blow from northeast. Below the equator, they blow from the southeast. The trade winds meet at what sailors call the doldrums, 
or the cons because of the monotonous windless weather. Trade winds have been used by modern sailors to cross the Pacific Ocean for centuries, and it has also been used by many ancient civilizations for eons traversing the waters from the lands and islands throughout the Pacific Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire, also known as the Pacific Ring of Fire, the Rim of Fire, the Girdle of Fire, or the Circum-Pacific Belt, is a region around much of the rim of the Pacific Ocean where the majority of the many volcanic eruptions and earthquakes on Earth occur. The Ring of Fire is a horseshoe-shaped belt about 25,000 miles long and up to about 310 miles wide. The Ring of Fire includes the Pacific coasts of South, Central, and North America, and the many islands in the Western Pacific Ocean. In the midst of the Pacific Ocean lies approximately 30,000 Pacific Islands. The origin of surfing is said to date to 400 AD and it is credited to the Pacific Islands of Polynesia and Hawaii. Although the birthplace of modern surfing is associated with the islands of the Pacific Ocean, the first Peruvian settlers have tried to ride the waves for fish since ancient times. Peru, after Brazil, is the second most important country in the region in the sport of surfing today. Let's put the pieces together so far. The Aboriginal populations of the Americas, Autochtons, America's Hidden Histories, Eagle Land, First Born Among Continents, the Pacific Ocean. You may be wondering where is he going with all of this? Well, let me make it all make sense so we can see just how the history and the knowledge of the post-flood Americas already stretching in an unbroken line of land from Nova Scotia to the far west is very significant and important especially in regard to how the antediluvian and post-flood populations of the Americas traversed and migrated naturally by way of Mother Nature to the land masses and islands throughout the Pacific Ocean to the Far West. And from the Americas, the Far West would be where? Remember, the Pacific trade winds are the permanent east to west prevailing winds that flow in the Earth's equatorial region and above the equator, the Pacific trade winds permanently and perpetually blow from the northeast or from North and Central America. Below the equator, the Pacific trade winds permanently and perpetually blow from the southeast or from South America. So with a little common sense, wouldn't it be more plausible for the antediluvian and post-flood civilizations of the Americas to easily traverse across the Pacific Ocean from east to west and the perpetually permanent and natural Pacific trade winds, or is that too far-fetched? Because the permanent east to west Pacific trade winds naturally flow about 15 miles an hour from North, Central, and South America across the Pacific Ocean and throughout the approximately 30,000 Pacific Islands to Australia, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, Philippines, China, Korea, Japan, and to Russia, which is also known historically as Siberia and Tartary, or Tartaria. However, Traversing from these continents and islands against the Pacific trade winds and currents also occurs by way of jet streams that flow from west to east, following the boundaries between the hot and cold air flowing across the Pacific Ocean. The hot and cold air boundaries that flow across the Pacific Ocean are more pronounced in the winter, making traversing west to east more navigable because the jet streams are at their strongest. So we can now ascertain that from creation, many civilizations have accomplished traversing the Pacific Ocean from east to west 
and the perpetual trade winds that primarily blow from the Americas and from west to east and the conditional jet streams that blow from Oceania and Asia. In the Pacific Ocean, one could literally island hop between the approximate 30,000 Pacific Islands from the Americas to Australia and Asia and vice versa. Thus, prior to any European invasions or conquests of the Americas, ancient civilizations traversed the Pacific Ocean as well as the Atlantic Ocean from the Eastern and Western Hemispheres. This fact will have further confirmation later in the presentation. So the question that is often purposely avoided is, historically, who are the Aboriginal and ancient people of the Pacific Islands, Australia, Oceania, Southeast Asia, China, and Japan?
Do we not see the very same physiognomies and phenotypes in North, Central, and South America today? Horn, Grotius, and other authorities admit that our continent has received part of its population from southern lands Australia and Australasia, and Nadalak recognizes Melanesian features on some of the Aboriginal tribes. The physical characteristics of the American Aborigines are admitted to point towards affinities with people belonging to the Pacific rather than those bordering the opposite coasts of the Atlantic Basin. Certain features recall the Melanesian inhabitants of the Pacific Islands rather than the African Negro races. The secret genocide of the Tasmanian people. As has happened everywhere that the Europeans have conquered and settled, death and destruction was brought to the native Tasmanian people who were completely and violently butchered out of existence by European invaders. First through disease which wiped out thousands. Sound familiar? The last of the Tasmanians, William Laney died in 1869. Dr. Leduit Crowther removed his head in the name of science at the Colonial Hospital and made a tobacco pouch out of his scrotum. The entire Tasmanian race is now extinct, their land stolen. I hope that you have been informed by the material and the information and that you've enjoyed the content and production. Please support the channel. Your support is appreciated in the production of the video presentations.